I mean, I think that word is is a great the, the word canister. Mm. I think is is a good word because it. Uh, well, to me, I hear canister and I think round, kind of around, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's what it ought to look like visually. This, you know, if you're doing, if you are creating this, uh, you know, if you're creating stability in the abdominal wall or in the lumbar spine, it should. I I always say. Um, you know, number one, you should not accentuate spinal curves if you mm-hmm. are creating good quality stability. They mm-hmm. you, they don't accentuate, mm-hmm. and they you should not increase or create concavities and convexities in the abdominal wall or in the muscles. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, and so they're just another way of saying it should just kind of be a smooth round barrel cylinder. And yes. Visually, that's you what want... it ought to look like. <laughs> yes, and, and, you're looking and that, for that. Yeah, and that barrel isn't necessarily, it's not hard. It's not yeah. like I poke it and there's absolutely pure, you know, solid. Mm-hmm. There's a, a bit of tone, mm-hmm. but it, it's not, you know, it's not the hardcore brace yes, of that's nothing right. is going to move and I'm going to stabilize well, right. and lock everything down. That's right. I think, uh, again, in um, Brett's presentation, that was very well uh, described in terms of going between uh, the forceful lockdown at a moment of of force production that is significant and um, uh, transient. Right, right. It's the it's the instant of yes. impact, or it's the instant yes. of the of the power production, but before and after you don't have any of that. You don't have, you don't need that. And, uh, people, um, rarely have to be comfortable letting the central nervous system decide on the bracing degree rather than a voluntary effort at all times to make this happen. It is if you, as a, as an individual, try to regulate intra-abdominal pressure throughout the day by being consciously involved, you will be very clumsy at it. It is, in my view, better to have references that tell you it is present rather than references that tell you how much you are activating because it's a little bit like insulin delivery. If you're doing it artificially, you'll always miss the mark. You will never be spot on. Mm -hmm. You have to let the central nervous system guide the degree of stabilization that is required for the task, because it is the only overarching complex organ that can monitor all the data sufficiently to make the best and most efficient decision about that. So if That's, you're under uh, bracing or over bracing through voluntary intention, you could end up actually making things less efficient. And I mean, that, that's great. I mean, that, that uh, before I forget what you said, you mm-hmm. said you, re- it, you want some t- you want like to you reference want... points that yeah, tell you that points. the brace is present but I guess, not the, so then yes. what would be what would be you know some practical or whatever some, you want to call oh, it reference points uh one would be for example the sense of tension in the pelvic floor or the anterolateral aspect of the abdominal wall or the lateral aspect of the abdominal wall um a sense of tone that you can um, come to recognize without having to touch your um, your ab- your abdomen. Mm-hmm. Um, a sense of um, um, relative relaxation of the erector spinae that it is not turned on and tight. The ability to breathe at the same time in a relaxed manner that you're not kind of wheezing, your throat is not constricted, 
during the activity. Um, and so you can build up um, a, refer a sensation reference points, which at first you may have to actually palpate and make sure that you can link your appreciation or sensation to an actual activity of the canister. But then after that, you don't need to worry so much about the, the degree of the sensation. Mm -hmm. As long as you can identify that it is present, and then you can relinquish the effort to your central nervous system. So the more I push or the more I pull or the harder I kick, I rely on the central nervous system to regulate the IAP to that activity so that I'm not trying to go, oh, you know what, I need to brace a little bit more. In fact, I often tell people, I say, if you're not sure that you are bracing enough, just take a deeper breath. That will facilitate the muscle function and you will probably get a better brace that way than if you try to bear down and make it um, a more firm brace because mm -hmm. you will probably overshoot the mark and overload yourself inadvertently. Yeah, that, no, that's great. I mean, and that, and that, I would say that directly follows from what the DNS perspective essentially teaches, which mm -hmm. is this is an automatic postural stability function. Mm -hmm. This is not supposed to be under voluntary control. No. This is a subcortical program uh, that is involuntary. Now, yes, when we try to retrain someone initially, mm -hmm. we're trying to do things voluntary to get access. And I use kind of the analogy of we're rebooting the software a little bit mm -hmm. within the mm -hmm. brain. But mm -hmm. ultimately, this needs to be reflexive and automatic, automatic and integrated because yes. for obvious reasons, we're all, we all understand. You can't be thinking about your brace when, when you're doing anything from, you know, That's right. basic recreational activity to striking a golf ball or, right. or you know, a tennis or anything else, any other kind of sport. You're not thinking about those things. It's supposed to be automatically integrated. Yes. Um, I think that, um, it's important that we remember that a lot of um, a lot of teaching or awareness training is giving cues or reference points that the uh, we are drawing attention to reference points. That's how we change posture. That's how we change movement. We change the person's awareness of reference points. For instance. If I have somebody who tends to stand on the outside of his foot, his reference, his natural reference point is the lateral column of his foot. That is what his brain identifies as a uh, resting or neutral position for him. It is not an ideal position for the foot, nor is it an ideal position for the rest of the extremity and what it will do to the torso, etc. Wait, I don't so, know if you heard. There's no such thing as ideal posture, Robert. You can <laughs> you can support on your foot any way you like, as long as you make it fun, or you know, don't tell the patient they're doing it bad because you know that would set off a whole nocebo effect. So okay. just to let you know, just to educate okay. you a little bit. I will make sure you're removed from the DNS website. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... Sure. <laughs> Or at least you have your own little web page. <laughs> well, my, my my picture can still be up there. There'll just be a big red X through it. <laughs> I know. It will be like going to the Canadian border. So. Um, so, so. <laughs> yeah. Walking on the outside of your foot. That's right. So if I, if I change, um, if I'm helping the patient through postural re-education, use of the canister, uh, awareness of center of gravity um, orientation. I can make him aware of the change, or he can make me aware of a change of the reference point away from the lateral column towards the big toe and the medial column towards more towards the center of the foot. And that becomes his reference point to know that his posture 
is in a better position than where it was. So we always rarely, if there's no change in awareness of position or reference point, then you probably have not made any change whatsoever. Unless the position was already ideal for that, um, for that posture, and all you were doing was um, reinforcing what already was there. It's good, mm -hmm. and you wanted to you want to strengthen it and reiterate the position's um, uh, efficiency or effectiveness. But otherwise, when we need to have a strategy change in posture or movement, it is the reference points that we focus on and that we have to do through some conscious uh, method. And then um, if we have, even if we have a reflexive um, approach, the patient still has to be aware of what the new reference point is so he can voluntarily and then automatically integrate it into his ADLs, into the synergies, etc. cetera. Right. So, if you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more like it, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also stay up to date on our latest seminars on our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook at IMTR Seminars.